Nisha Katona's back in the kitchen with another delicious recipe. What are you making, Nisha? This is a paneer curry. So it's paneer with peas and spinach, mm -hmm. and paneer is an Indian cheese, so I could just talk for ages. I get really anoraki about paneer and curry generally, Vern. I don't think I've cooked for you before. No, I don't think you have. That's why I'm really excited. Oh, good. In, in fact, before, before, well, during the ads, I asked for more rice, because I am definitely going to get involved. I thought you were, you were <laughs> cracking a joke there. No, <laughs> I was no, disdain, but, but rice, actually, no, you've got an appetite. Yeah, and, and <laughs> usually we stand up at these, at these parts, but I sat down because I don't want to get any on my shirt, because I know that I'm going to eat it all. It's because you're, you're six foot plus, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, he said, can I have some more rice in a seat. I want to eat, enjoy my milk. Yeah, probably. absolutely. <laughs> Do help yourself. So okay. this is a paneer curry, finished product for you to right. try. And then as we're going, you sort of get an idea of the flavours that I'm going to show you. Thank you. So paneer, obviously, it's a meat-free dish. Mm -hmm. um, and when you are in the meat-free kitchen, that is when you start dishes with a seed spice. So you go into a, you know, an Indian grocer's and you see all these powders mm. and you see spices that look like this, little seeds. The seeds are what we cook vegetables with because we start it off like this. A bit of oil in the pan and we drop into that about a teaspoon of cumin seeds. So cumin seeds give a dish a really good belt, you know, a good bit of flavour in cumin seeds. And what is happening is all of those seeds have got aromatic oils trapped in them and you're kind of creating like almost like a salad dressing. It's like this dressed oil. Are we liking? That is heaven. Oh, <laughs> amazing. That is Told heaven. you. So it's quite sweet and tangy and poppy mm. and textures and all of that. Really good. So what's happening here, mm. you're going to get the smell of the cumin seeds frying, yeah? You rolling your eyes like cross. No, Don't I'm know rolling you're my eyes because I'm in heaven right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness me. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. So, and you'll get those little cumin sort of aftertaste. So that's what's happening in here. I've got the cumin seeds and you've got to wait until they go almost dark black. Okay. So dark brown, black, you'd never drop cumin seeds loose into a dish because they've got this really acrid taste. When they fry, they go citrus and woody and gorgeous. And that's because of the oil inside them? Exactly. Right. So that oil is now in the oil here. And then I'm going to dress this dish with that oil. So I could toss boiled potatoes in there or cabbage and it's just going to be, that's your curry, you're done, you're happy days. OK, so cumin seeds are fr now fried, but... We are going to create almost a meat sauce. So this is like a tikka masala sauce. And when you're creating a meat sauce, there are three ingredients that make a meat sauce. And that is onion, ginger and garlic. So the recipe for this is online. So if you want the quantities, it's online. Um, but honestly, it's as much... I always say this, it's as much as you can be bothered to chop. So, you know, in an Indian kitchen, there are no scales. You never weigh things. There's no teaspoons or any of that. It's a bit... It's you eyeball it and you think about, what do I like the flavour of? If I like garlic, I'll put more garlic in. Right. OK? So, sacred moment. We fry the cumin seeds, onion, ginger, garlic, and we end up with this. Let me just switch that off. Right. Oh, that's dramatically changed colour, hasn't it? Yeah. And you do want this kind of drama. You want... Because the sweeter... The curry, the more brown you want those onions. Right. And this paneer, you do want a good bit of sweetness in it because, you know, you've got the peas, you're sort of, sort of harking to the fact that this is going to be a bit of a sweet curry. So, onion, ginger and garlic are now fried off. I'm going to start creating this sauce. So, into this go just three spices. Um, we go in with garam masala. Garam masala is a very powerful spice. Mm. If you, you know, if you want one spice in your kitchen that's going to take you firmly to India, garam masala, because it's got loads and loads of flavour. And paneer, if you look at it, it's quite impenetrable. Just, it's just kind of, kind of, it's a bit mozzarella-ish, you know, there's not a hell of a lot going on there. So you want those big spices to punch through. OK, so, so garam masala. Hey, is paneer an Indian cheese, is it? Or is it, uh, where, is, where is it from? It is an Indian cheese, so... It's like in the nursery rhymes, you know, Little Miss Muffet sat under eating her curds and whey. This is the curds. Right. So what happens is to make paneer, so I'm just going to go turmeric and chilli in this. To make paneer, all you do is you get milk, whole milk or cream, and into that you add a bit of lemon juice. And you simmer, simmer, simmer. And what will happen is it will separate into the protein and the liquid. So the liquid will come to the top and you get this lovely kind of white protein. And that is the... That is the basis of all cheeses, really. Mm. And then what you do is you get a cloth and you strain it and you hang it off your tap. This is, you know, in my, in my mum's house, that would, you'd always have a big balloon of paneer hanging off everything. And then she's pressing it. So then you've got to press it. So you'd be looking for your textbooks and they'd be on the paneer in the fridge. <laughs> I kid you not. We've had Grey's Anatomy in the fridge before. <laughs> now, squishing this paneer down and then you cut it. 
Do not bother. Get down to the supermarket and buy some. Right. It's great. It looks like this. You chop it up and it dissolves and it becomes very soft very quickly. Mm. Right, so we have got garasala, turmeric chilli, quick recap, and into that goes this really lovely herb called fenugreek. And fenugreek, I did a perfume making course recently, and fenugreek is that intrigue. It's that you smell it and you think, oh, I want a curry. That's fenugreek. It's, it just hits your brain. We want quite a thick, potent sauce, so that's where you use tomato puree. Right. If you wanted it lighter, and a bit more summery, you'd use tin tomatoes, but that would be boring. Mm. No, we want a bit of a belt to this. So, tomato puree. And then all you do is water this down to create the sauce. Oh. And then you're going to see, I'm going to get that very archetypal kind of tikka masala looking sauce. You know what I like about all right, this is what you said at the very, very beginning, where it's not about measurements, it's not about volumes of spice, it's about how you like it, you know, so you can make it to suit you. Yeah. Isn't that liberating? Yeah, though? I love it. And this is what's... So honestly, it's amazing just being able to do this. You know, to do a show in the morning in England in seven minutes and be allowed to show people how to make curry when people are so have been so afraid well, of it. Spices are really intimidating, aren't they? Because, A, you don't know which ones to buy, and then, B, you don't know the quantities, but you've just smashed all that by saying, listen, it doesn't matter. Uh, Flavour it how you like it. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's kind of not the baking tradition. You know, if, you, if you're a baker, you're much more punctilious about it. You're much mm. more, you know, it's got to be... It's almost mechanics, isn't it? This is really... Think about the flavours you want. If you like a lot more punch, a lot more garam masala. Into this, I've put the paneer, I've put peas, frozen peas straight from the freezer, you want to simmer those down. Into this, a good handful of just chopped baby spinach. This is a great place, honestly, to drop in any of those. Roast gin of veg, whatever you've got left in the fridge, stick it in the paneer curry and you're getting your sort of, uh, you know, your seven a day in mm. one dish. It's really well hidden and it melts beautifully. And then just yeah. to finish this off, Very. we're going to put salt and sugar. It's really important that you do both. The measurements are on the website. But again, it's that thing, Vernon, where you're constantly tasting. Mm. So the theory is in the Indian kitchen that your tongue has seven, six areas of taste. So the salt, salt, sugar, bitter, sour, but there's also pungency and astringency. And every dish you make has got to have a nod to each part of those tongues. So sweet, sour, salt, all of that. And sweet, you just put a bit of brown sugar in. Mm. OK. So, so depending on your family's taste, Indian food varies, I guess, a lot. Completely. Different regions. So yeah. in the south, where it's a lot more verdant, you've got a load of coconut, you're putting more coconut into things. But you are 100% right. There's not an, the, there are no two Indian chefs that are the same. Yeah. You know, and we get really precious about it, you know. I know, sort of, my mum watching, you know, Indian food programmes used to chuck socks at the screen. <laughs> How dare they? It's sacrilegious, you know. <laughs> um, at the end, to make this sort of, just give it a lovely creamy edge and to soften the whole thing down in terms of flavour, take the edge off, um, a little bit of creme fraiche. So can you see there's no cream in this? Mm. There's very little fat at the beginning. Honestly, you can have this every day of the week. I think very sure. healthy. It's amazing. Very healthy and it tastes it really insane. Is. Yeah, for it's... all the details of today's recipes and more delicious ideas uh, from this morning's chefs, head to the free app this morning. Up.